use the word panic um, when describing what the Fed did. Why, why do you use that word? Why wasn't it justified what they did? Because they're worried about maybe a consumer panic. Maybe they're also worried about what could be a very real freeze up of business in this country, especially on yeah. the mechanism that makes this economy work. And that's the, the service side. Yeah, well, I, I don't disagree with that. I, when I say panic, it doesn't mean it's not justified. I mean, sometimes panic is justified. If someone's breaking in your house through the window, I think you're supposed to panic. Uh, and business activity is pretty likely to contract. I mean, the anecdotal evidence is getting pretty powerful. I received multiple emails today of clients that were planning on visits to Double Line saying we're canceling them. And I'm sure I'm not alone in that. And obviously the airlines are in free fall for good reason. Mm -hmm. And small business activity is going, to, is going to contract. I think it's foolhardy to think anything other than this is going to take a major hit to short-term economic growth. So, I mean, so do you think the Fed... Maybe, maybe you, grocery store sales will go up uh, on a, a short-term spike, but all other kind of social activity is grinding to a standstill. So do you and think so the it's Fed not made, surprising at all. Do, forgive me, Jeffrey. Do, do you think the Fed made the right move? I, I think cutting rates was justified for sure. I, uh, I mean, I don't like the way sort of in which it was done. It, it feels like, uh, you know, they were between a rock and a hard place. I mean, the Fed, I think when I say panic, the Fed in their most recent press conference took a victory lap, talking about how they had finally reached a stable place in policy and that uh, they could be on hold for the foreseeable future, maybe even the entire world, that we were in a good place, that policy rates were appropriate. And I, I don't know, I thought that that was a little bit of hubris at the time, but the uh, data set has certainly changed to the point where the Fed was between a rock and a hard place. If they don't cut rates, you know, it's a real problem. The stock market is tanking, or was tanking last week, and now it's a huge roller coaster ride. And the bond market uh, activity, as I said earlier, with high yield spreads just blowing out while Treasury rates are falling just as fast as high yields are going up, uh, it's, I think it's, uh, you can't uh, blame the Fed for cutting the rates 50. They're just probably going to have to do it again because this situation doesn't seem to be doing anything but continuing. And, you know, you see the press conference with the president and the, and the physicians uh, on top of this uh, coronavirus situation, and, and they're saying that, you know, they might have a vaccine in like a year, year and a half. So we, nobody knows what's, what's happening here, and so caution is appropriate. So um, Scott Miner told me the other day the 10-year could go to 25 basis points. I mentioned right now we're at 91. We could test yeah. uh, 90, which is the record. Uh, where yeah. do you th how low do they go in your mind? I think we're pretty near the low right now. I mean, maybe we get to 80 basis points on the 10-year. I don't really believe in the 25 basis point 10-year. I think that's just uh, extrapolating the move that's already happened. I mean, I, I think that the short rates are definitely going lower. There's absolutely no upward pressure on short rates, but we're starting to see a steepening yield curve uh, in a way that's, that's noticeable. Uh, not today exactly, although it's moving around, but we now have a 100 basis point spread between the two-year and the 30-year and a 90 basis point spread between the five-year and the 30-year. And these are uh, levels that we haven't seen in, in, in quite a while. So I think we're getting to the point where fiscal stimulus is going to be uh, more talked about. In fact, I think uh, we're going to be hearing that as a narrative that's quite common in the days ahead. And it's difficult to see uh, why you would have a demand for a 160 uh, long bond or a 150 long bond or an 80 basis point tenure if all the supply is coming. But I, I don't really think uh, calling the direction of interest rates is all that meaningful right now. I mean. You don't make any money regardless. I think you're just better off staying in cash, really, than in owning uh, a 10-year treasury because the profit potential, even if you're absolutely right and you do get uh, lower 10-year uh, rates, you, you just don't make any money. You're starting, it's a place where you just have return-free risk. But you can understand, uh, you, you, you can understand though, why some people are looking at the 10-year, for example, and saying, and we've discussed it on, on this program multiple times, as long as the 10-year note yield keeps falling, it's hard to be confident about a stock market bottoming. I agree with that. I, I think the thing you're supposed to own, and I've talked about this uh, for almost two years now, is gold. I mean, I turned bullish on gold in the summer of 2018 on my uh, 
on, on my total return webcast when it was at 1190. And it just seems to me, as I talked about my Just Markets webcast, which is up on DoubleLine.com on a replay, that the dollar is going to get weaker. And the dollar getting weaker is, seems to be almost a policy. And the Fed cutting rates, slashing rates, is clearly going to be dollar negative. And that means that gold is going to go higher. Gold is doing super well, even with the dollar unchanged over the past, really, 14 months or so. And, the and gold is at a record high in terms of euro and many other currencies. And I feel like it's almost a certainty that gold is going to go to an all-time high versus the dollar as well. And uh, the gold is really performing well. Gold miners are, have not done well at all. I mean, they're probably up today, but they, they haven't done much year to date. And so I think you have to look at alternative assets to financial assets in this, in this present environment. And gold is an anti-dollar play that I think will continue to be profitable. We, so I'm not really thinking about buying the 10-year to make money. Right. I, uh, you're making a lot more money in other things.